Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use Point E inside Amaya using Bifrost. Point E is a machine learning model from OpenAI for generating 3D point clouds from complex prompts. And why might we want to bring these into Maya using Bifrost? Well, by bringing them into Bifrost as point objects, we can do any manipulations that we would do on points inside of Bifrost. As you can see, the model output is still pretty low res, so these aren't quite ready to use for creating production ready assets directly. Bringing them into Bifrost, we can use them as simulation sources for abstract visualizations, uh, run meshing operations on them and things like that. So to get started, we're gonna be using Replicate where fortunately someone has hosted Point E, which we can access from Python with their really lightweight API. One of the outputs they give us is a JSON file with all of the point locations and point colors for the generated model that we can then import into Bifrost. So the first thing we have to do is install Replicate. So to do that, go to the GitHub page for this tutorial and copy one of the commands depending on your operating system. So for me, I'm on Mac, you can copy this one, go to a terminal and run that. Make sure you have Maya closed when you do this. And then once that's done, you're gonna open Maya and then run import replicate. And if you don't see any errors, then replicate has been successfully installed and we're ready to go. Next, go back to GitHub and go into the pointy to biff tutorial Python script and copy and paste the entire script and see the Maya script editor. And then go back to replicate and go to your account. If you don't have an account, you can sign up with GitHub or create a new account and then copy your API token back to Maya in the script editor on line seven, paste that in, and then run these first eight lines here. So what that's gonna do is set up the, an environment variable with your API key to connect to replicate, you should be good to go. So first I'm going to show you just running a prompt and then getting the points before we do anything in Bifrost. So I have a couple utility functions here. This top one is what actually calls uh, via the replicate library, calls the model on the server, and then returns the prediction from the prompt you input. The second function here creates a small UI where you can type in your prompt inside of Maya. And then we'll get to this, uh, this last function when we start working with Bifrost. So I'm going to run these. So those are ready and then call, call our UI function. I'm gonna use the, the default, default prompt I put in here, a vase of purple flowers and hit okay. Now this could take up to three minutes to run. If it's uh, your first time running the model, you can look into on replicates what, what are called cold boots, where if a model is being used often, they, they kind of keep it up and running, but if not, uh, they kind of park it and then when you when you make a fresh call, they kind of have to start the model up. So typically this uh, this inference will only take about a minute, but could take could take up to you know three or four minutes. So now we should have our points in uh, stored in this data variable here. So just to look at that, this is again a dictionary uh, that has a few keys, one being the colors for each point and then one being the co coordinates of each point. And that's basically all we need to do to call the model from replicate. So from here, I'm going to show you how to get those into Bifrost so that you can then manipulate the points as, as Bifrost point objects. And to do that, launch the Bifrost graph editor, create a new graph and create a value node. And then change the type to a vector array with three components. So the type should read array of math float three, and then right click and rename that to point E color data. And this is gonna be the node where we're gonna store the color data. It doesn't quite matter what you name this, but it does need to match uh, what we've scripted over here. So if you name it something else in Bifrost, you're gonna to wanna to change that and then copy and paste that node. And then we're gonna rename this one to 
hold our point positions here. I click rename point positions, and then I'm going to go to display show no names so we can see that. Display show no names. So we have our pointy color data and pointy point positions. And then back in the script editor, what this method here does is it's going to take the data, it's going to find the Bifrost graph that we just created, and then it's going to format the data in the dictionary that was returned from replicate into a giant string of numbers separated by commas. This is a necessity for how we get the data into Bifrost with this VNN node command. So the uh, the data has to be formatted in a very specific way, so that's what we're doing here, and then just dropping those into the into the value on the the value node here. So I'm going to run that, so that's good to go, and then lastly run run the method with the actual data we have. And these nodes here should now store store that data. So next what we want to do is actually visualize these points. Create a multiply node and I'm going to give this a scale so we can manipulate the scale. So I'm going to create a value, connect that to the input, type in scale here. And then in the attribute editor, Sorry, the channel box. I'm going to set the scale to 10 just to start. And that should actually be our position data, not our color data. Get those. And then construct points. So this is going to construct a, a point object with the positions that we input. And then set geo property. We're going to pass in our points, and then the property we're going to set is color. And then use our pointy color data into the data port here. And then to visualize these, we can use a point scope. And then pass that into a terminal. So if all went well, should be able to make this smaller and then see our points here. And the points showed up black, which probably means something is uh, something isn't right in the uh, point scope here. Uh, the coloring property is point normal, so change that to color, and then we should get the the color. So the next thing we'll notice is this came in sideways. Uh, the model that was trained was probably trained in a ZUP environment. Maya, of course, is YUP. So I'm going to show you how to create a compound to rotate those. And again, this isn't strictly necessary, but it also goes to show that now these are essentially just Bifrost point objects, and you can manipulate them, again, as you would manipulate any Bifrost points. So to rotate these points, create a new compound by hitting Controller Command G. I'm going to rename that to rotate points and then pass in the points we want to rotate. Go inside the node here, get point positions, and then we want a degree to radian. That way we can just use degrees. I'm going to pass the degrees out as an input in case you want to hook this up to anything. And then let's set that to, I believe we want negative 90 here. We're going to rotate this about negative 90 about the x axis. So next, we need axis angle to quaternion. And axis, again, we want to rotate about the x axis. Uh, so we want to put a 1 there. And then next we're going to actually rotate the points by quaternions. Pass in our point position. 
and then set the point positions, set the new rotated point positions. on our original geometry here and then output that and then go back to our high level graph here and pass this now into the set geo color node in between there and we should see those points rotated So that is actually it for getting the points into Maya with Bifrost running a prompt on replicate so we can continue to do this now that this graph is hooked up. We can run this entire script. Actually, I'll close this Bifrost graph, run this entire script, and then we can do a red airplane or something just to check. And now that we've recently run the model, this again should only take, take about a minute to run this time. And there we have it. Now, as I mentioned, I wanted to show you a couple of cool things you can do with this. And if you don't want to follow along with making the graphs, you just want to use them. On the GitHub page, I have included some examples with an additional example that I won't walk through here, but we'll show you how to use the points as um, sources for an aero simulation, which is quite interesting. So one thing we can do is actually mesh this. So take our points and run points to volume. And then volume to mesh. And there's the meshed volume. You can play around with the settings to try to get something uh, maybe a little nicer. But I actually think uh, in the current kind of resolution of these models, Things that are kind of more abstract visualizations seem to be a little bit nicer. So I wanted to show you how to do something like that with the little curl, dis curl noise disintegration solver. So quickly, I'm gonna create a new compound with command G, and then I'm gonna rename that to curl disintegration. And then firstly, we're gonna pass in our points. And then inside, And then inside our compound here, actually let's do this at the higher level, create a couple inputs to this, create a three value nodes. Name the first one curl speed and set that to 0.5. The second one will be curl frequency. and set that to 0.375. And then lastly, this one we're going to change to an integer and leave that at zero. That'll be used to set the noise seed. And then back in our compounds, we're gonna get point positions. and then multiply those. We're gonna multiply those with the curl frequency. And then add a curl noise. Pass in our multiplied values and the seed. And then another multiply node where we're going to multiply the noise the curl speed, and then the frame number. Uh, and to do that, we add a time node and grab frame. And then we want to add that to the current positions. And then set point position. On the original geometry with our new positions. And then output that. 
go back to our top graph here and then add another terminal turn this one off and close that out and then if I hit play here those disintegrate take the script editor out here that back and then we can actually play with these values here I'm gonna pass those I'm going to pass those back to Maya so we can manipulate those in the channel box and just rename these here to speed and frequency. Close my graph and then now we can manipulate these in the channel box by selecting our graph and then set this again to 0.5 and 0.375. Now when I play this back, for me that's uh, maybe a little bit fast and the frequency is a little large, so drop the speed down to say 0.3 and the frequency to, uh, let's try 0.25, see what that does. Actually let's go the other way with the frequency, 0.5. And let's try one. All right, that's pretty nice, I like that. So lastly, what I wanted to show you was, again, on the more abstract visualization side, uh, using a node from the MJCG compounds, which I highly recommend you have. In any case, um, now that we have this uh, nice animation, we can add a create plexus from a points node. I'm gonna hide our original animation, turn this one on, and then make this smaller. This actually has a nice uh, nice effect on the current radius. I'm going to close that and hit play, and this has kind of a cool... Uh, let's slow this way down. This has a cool sort of abstract, really nice abstract effect here. So you can start to get um, pretty wild and interesting with, with the stuff you do here. And that's it. Thanks for watching.